social policy. Besides changing the title, the role of the state architect was trained, including advising on the implementation of the architectural policy actions, contributing to the government construction contracts committee, developing procurement and contracting policies in support of architectural quality in state-funded projects, consulted, consulted regarding legislation and regulation affecting quality in architecture and the built environment. Consulting regarding the design quality of all infrastructural programs and advising the relevant de departments ensuring the, the, care of the care of monuments and the conservation, restoration and reuse of historical buildings is fully exploited. In addition, the state architect is responsible for leading and managing uh, the office architectural team with oversight of the architectural input to all construction projects and it is a main advisor, advisor to the government in relation to architectural matters. A second outcome of the policy has been a higher investment in research and knowledge of the design of the built environment in order to strengthen the evidence base for architecture in built environment policy. This has resulted in several publications of guidelines and manuals of best practice, research studies on sustainable placemaking, environmental performance of building forms and typologies, etc. A third outcome of the policy was the establishment of the Irish Architectural Foundation. The foundation was established in 2005 and initially it was to be a virtual architectural center via the internet to provide public access to Irish architecture documentation and events. However, there was a public recognition of, uh, uh, sorry. However, there was a public recognition of the need of an architectural center with a national remit to strengthen Ireland's visual culture and expose people to the artistic nature of architecture. Therefore, the foundation was established with a purpose to deliver major architectural programs primarily aimed at de developing audience for architecture in Ireland, with, but also raising the profile of Irish architecture abroad. The Irish Architectural Foundation has four primary financial sources, the Arts Council of Ireland, the Department of Arts and Heritage, the Office of Public Works, and the Royal Institute of Architects of Ireland. Uh, for specific programs and projects, the foundation captures extra funding from diverse institutions and companies, namely from the government policy on architecture. The foundation produces an average of about 10 projects a year and has different programs of exhibitions, talks, film screenings, competition, publication, workshops, etc. Just to give three examples of initiatives, I would present the project Space for Learning, that is a design competition initiated by the Irish Architectural Foundation to challenge current thinking on school design, creating an opportunity for architects to collaborate with, end, with the end users of educational space, the students. A second example is the National Architects in School Initiative, where architects and architectural graduates will engage with transition year students in hands-on design projects and collabor collaborates with teachers to maximize cross-curricular learning with the second level school syllabus. A third and the last example, oh, sorry, this was the National Architects in School. Uh, and the third and last example is Open House Dublin. Similar to other open house events uh, all around Europe, it offers visitors a chance to explore 100 buildings with, within a type or spend a weekend moving around the city. Currently, there is a huge diversity of initiatives directed to the promotion of architecture in Ireland, and most of them, or part of them, are co-financed by the government architectural policy. I would not have the time here to present more outcomes. I will just give two other examples of successful collaborations resulting from the Irish Architectural Implementation Program. The first is a three-year program engaging with architectural scheme, a partnership between the Arts Council and the Department of the Environment. The objective is to support ambitious, innovative and creative high quality initiatives that specifically aim to enhance and extend the public experience of and engagement with architecture. Finally, uh, another successful outcome has been the collaboration between the Department and the Environment and the Royal Institute of Architects of Ireland, which has been responsible for the development of several initiatives. One of them is the Shaping Space, the REI's program for developing awareness of architecture and the built environment in schools' children. The program started in 1996 and it has been internationally acclaim, acclaimed, delivering a wide range of online tools for children in, in, in schools. Conclusions. 
After this uh, overview of the European panorama and brief examination of the Irish architectural policy, what has been the impact of the Council resolution and the Council conclusion text in the development of architectural policies by the Member States? And more specifically, what lessons can we draw on from the Irish experience? Currently, there are 19 administrations that have a formal policy on architecture or a set of policy documents at national level. Additionally, there are 14 administrations that are planning to have an official document or are already in the final phase of approval of the policy. Based on the results of the survey, this number is increasing since the 90s and is expected to continue to grow in the following years. This growing trend of the number of the countries with public policies on architecture has been facilitated by the development of international networks, such as the European Forum for Architectural Policies which has allowed it increased exchange of information and experience between the countries, namely through the organization of international meetings. In this sense, looking at the progression of architectural policies, it is possible to conclude that like other public policies, a process of Europeanization is occurring, where through benchmarking each country learn from the other and make a more convergence between the policies possible. Nevertheless, the nature and context of the policies cannot be divorced from the constitutional, administrative and political framework in which the policy was developed. Therefore, we can conclude that the Council resolution and conclusion text documents uh, uh, sorry, are having a positive impact at European level in encouraging the member states to promote architectural quality as a condition to improve the quality of European citizens. Additionally, the two EU Council documents are important in the legitimization of the architectural policies already adopted, and most important, to the stimulation of the ones that are currently being developed. Nevertheless, some questions can be made about the real impact extent of the Council resolution and conclusions in the governmental programs and procurement process. Like all the other EU soft policies, the two documents are not mandatory for the Member States. However, it was not mentioned by any of the countries the need for a more direct approach. Some countries have mentioned the need for more evidence and research at European level that support the benefits and effectiveness of national architectural policies and their contribution to the territorial cohesion. An expert program more engaged with this topic would be welcome. A better knowledge of the present state of the art will be a great value for the countries that are still in the early stage of their policies in order to increase the awareness of the people to the architectural role and responsibilities in improving the quality of the built environment. About the second questions, what lessons can we draw from the Irish experience? One of the most relevant teaching is that to ensure some degree of effectiveness, it is necessary a permanent monitoring and evaluation of the execution of the policy action plan during the policy implementation phase. Already in the 80s, Brown and Widowski point out that implementation is impossible without careful evaluation and feedback. This can be done by some type of coordination body or more or less formal, which will be responsible for continuous monitoring and control of implementation. The second, major teaching, sorry, the second major teaching that we can extract from the Irish case is that it is necessary to work across organizational and professional boundaries, covering and involving a broad spectrum of actors and participants, in addition to governmental bodies. In fact, to deliver better places, it requires decision makers at every level focused on the importance of built outcomes and the collective commitment for achieving a quality end result. In this context, the concept of governance gains particular relevance because it embodies a notion that a whole range of institutions, actors, tools, and relationships are involved in the process of governing, which better portrays a new way of thinking about state capabilities and state society relationships. For that reason, in a governance perspective, governance should use new tools and techniques to steer and guide society for a better built environment. Translating these concerns, for the Croatian architectural policy, we can note that the recent Croatian policy document is really well organized and very complete in terms of principles, aims, and objectives. Nevertheless, it established an extension action plan for a first generation document. Based in the Irish experience, to face implementation problems, perhaps the coordination group could start by choosing the most priority actions for the first years of the policy implementation. Fundamentally, and to conclude, the implementation of a public policy is always a rational and incremental process. 
challenges and difficulties will always occur as they are part of the complex and dyna dynamic process of public policy making. I hope this presentation has corresponded to the expectation and has provided some useful material for the following roundtable and discussion. Thank you for your attention.